Now this is an M3A1. Now to be quite honest, there, there's very little difference and you'll notice this when you see the other Stuarts. But there are differences, but they're mostly inside and that's what I want to talk about. Basically, the tank's the same as an M3. It's powered by the same seven-cylinder Continental air-cooled engine in the back. Drives down to the front through a um, transmission under the nose here. It's got the same form of suspension with two vertical volute bogies and the large trailing idler at the back and the drive sprocket obviously at the front. But basically it's, it's the same as the others. Now the only thing is t two or three things have happened in the meantime. For a start, in America particularly, they've taken to welding the tanks and you'll notice that this tank is more or less exclusively welded which is quite an advantage from the um, visual point of view and also from the safety point of view because rivets flying about inside are something you don't want and that does happen when they're hit. But the real importance of the M3A1, which is why the Americans regarded it as a completely new tank, was the installation of a turret basket for the crew, the gun crew to sit in or the turret crew to sit in. Now, because this tank's designed in the way it is, with the engine at the back and the transmission at the front, there's quite a high drive shaft coming straight down the middle of the fighting compartment. In the earlier tanks, you'll see the difficulty of getting over it. But on this one, the turret basket rotates above it. It means that the turret basket itself is horribly cramped. It's only designed for two men, but they're sitting almost with their chins on their knees, just trying to um, do their job. But it does, it's done to make it a bit easier for them. It was done actually for two reasons. The first was they'd introduced a power traverse system. Now they'd found in the earlier tanks, the ones without turret baskets, that the power traverse system was just too fast and the chaps are falling over trying to follow the turret round. They couldn't do it, especially with that shaft running right down the middle like it was. But with the turret basket, they could turn with the gun and that helped a lot. It meant they can keep their eye on the target and have the gun ready to fire at any point of the compass. They'd also fitted a um, mechanical stabiliser. It only worked in elevation, not in traverse. And a lot of people, especially the British soldiers, didn't like it very much. They tended to disconnect it and dump it if they could. But it has got one in it, an automatic stabiliser for the main armament in the vertical plane only. The gun is an M6 37mm, it's the longer version of the 37mm gun, which meant that it had quite a high impact on armour. It was about equivalent to the British two-pounder, very effective. The only real difference was that the 37 could not only fire solid shot, I mean armour piercing shot if you like, it could also fire a high explosive shot. It wasn't massive but it, it made a loud bang and frightened the life out of people, if nothing else. And that was a, considered an advantage over the British two-pounder. Um, the gun is in a fixed mounting, and it means that the gun and the coaxial machine gun are locked in the front of the turret and are aimed by the gunner when the power traverse operates. He goes round, follows the target, and then aims the gun and fires it when necessary. And it, it gave the tank a lot more flexibility than the old M3. But that's the real advantage of this tank. The only real drawback was from the point of view of the lap gunner who sat down next to the driver. He's sitting down here and he's got a Browning machine gun which he can use from the lap position. Now, unless they stopped that basket in exactly the right place, leaving the gap for him to get out, he was well and truly trapped in there. If the tank caught fire, he'd had it, and there was no way out, no other way at all. He had to go through the gap in the turret basket and then out through a hatch in the turret roof. And there was plenty of room, but um, it was it made an undignified scramble. But then with the place on fire, you want to get out as quick as possible. If the turret didn't stop there, if the men inside it had panicked and gone out and just left it, he was in real trouble. The driver could normally get out through the front visor, but not the, um, the lap gunner normally. He was trained to go out the top way. And if he couldn't, then he was in trouble. Otherwise, the tank is basically the same 
as the um, rest of the M3 series, which you'd expect. And from outside, it's, it's almost impossible with this type of homogeneous armoured turret to tell them apart. The tank's got about an inch of armour down both sides and about 1.5 to 1.75 inches on the, the front. It's, it's always thickest on the front. It makes sense to do that anyway. It was the most fightable tank, much more so than its predecessors. It still suffered from the rather short range. These tanks would not go a great distance with the, the existing fuel in them. About 70 miles was the maximum. And in the desert, this usually meant that if they were pursuing the Germans, although they were in a faster tank, this thing could go a lot faster than the German tanks, it could never really catch up with them because it usually had to stop every now and again to refuel. And the crews have made it a point of honour to stop and refuel before going into action so that the tank was at its fullest when they went into action and therefore they had some reserve of fuel to do the sort of manoeuvring that you might have to do in a tank versus tank fight, especially in the desert where it was going all over the place. Otherwise you ran a risk of running out of petrol in the middle of an action, which is not all that for much fun, but that's how it was done. But that's the M3A1 and it makes it slightly more interesting from the viewer's point of view to know that they were different inside and that's what this is all about. If you enjoyed that video, please subscribe to us on YouTube and support us on Patreon.